Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a really exciting discovery that suggests that the water on the moon, the tiny amounts of water on the moon, are actually created through the interaction with the Earth itself. In other words, the Earth's magnetosphere is responsible for creating quite a lot of water on the surface of this beautiful object. And that discovery sort of shocked the scientists. But let's actually talk a little bit more about this because there is a lot of detail here that we need to discuss. First of all, we know that the origins of water, even on our own planet, is still a bit of a mystery. We're not entirely sure if water came from the asteroids, if it came from some other space source, or if it was already here when the Earth was being made in the beginning of the solar system. What we do know, however, and especially something that we've learned in the last few years, is that water seems to be absolutely everywhere. We've discovered water on moons, we've discovered water on planets, pretty much all of the planets, including some of the hottest and some of the coldest ones, and everything from the rings of Saturn to some of the most distant objects in the solar system is basically full of water. So water should not really be that rare and should not be that difficult to find. Not surprisingly, even though originally most scientists believed that moon here was actually extremely dry and basically devoid of water. But in the last few years we've discovered that this was not the case. Here the water was discovered in various ices, ice deposits. It was also discovered in various deposits on the surface in specifically different rocks. And the presence of water hidden in various types of locations on the moon has actually been discovered by many different satellites. Now naturally we're not talking about liquid water, even though it looks blue here, we're talking about water deposits, most likely either ice or possibly some sort of a hydroxyl deposit. But nevertheless, there's a lot of it there, and something is continuously replenishing it. And we know that water shouldn't really stay on the surface of the moon for too long. There's a lot of radiation, there are a lot of interactions with the sun. Water should technically be actually evaporating and disappearing. So what's creating this water and what's causing it to remain there for well, basically billions of years? Now one obvious explanation here is maybe it's coming from various asteroids and comets colliding with the moon and eventually depositing that water on the surface. That's quite possible. But in a lot of these locations where water was discovered, it's a little bit difficult to explain all of this with just collisions. Something else must be happening here. Now, a few years ago, actually more like a few decades ago, it was proposed that possibly the sun can be responsible for creating water. And more specifically, the positively charged hydrogen ions coming from the surface of the sun, or basically the solar wind itself, when it actually comes closer to the moon, it will start interacting with various hydroxyl atoms present on the surface of the moon. Hydroxyl is OH, the stuff coming from the sun is H. H plus OH gives you H2O. And so one way that all of this water could have been created is basically by being bombarded by all of the solar wind for billions of years. But if this is correct, there should be an easy way of checking all of this, and there actually should be an easy way to find out if this is really what's happening here. What is that way, Anton, you may ask? Well, magnetosphere. Earth has a very strong magnetosphere that actually prevents the solar wind from basically damaging things on Earth. And we know that Moon once in a while passes through the magnetic tail of our planet, which we can actually try to simulate right here in Universe Sandbox, and for approximately three days it stays inside the magnetic field of planet Earth, thus protected from the solar wind. During this time, at least theoretically, there should be basically no new water generated because all of the solar wind coming from that location is going to be blocked by the magnetic field of planet Earth. And so one way we can try to measure all of this is by looking at the surface of the moon and trying to see if the amount of water on the surface changed before and after the moon passed through the magneto tail of planet Earth. If the amount of water changed, it means that the solar wind indeed produces a lot of the water. And well, as you can probably guess, that's actually not at all what the scientists discovered and they discovered something that surprised them quite a lot. Because it turns out when the moon finished its passage through the Magneto's hill, the amount of water on the moon replenished to the original levels. In other words, the magnetosphere of planet Earth helped the moon produce more water on the surface. Which means that the charged particles inside the magnetic field of planet Earth, and this is of course also positive ions, were landing on the moon, were interacting with the surface of the moon and various hydroxyl molecules, and were also producing even more water which also means that the Earth is actually responsible for producing at least part or possibly even most water we've found so far, with some other water obviously being produced by the Sun as well. 
So this is actually a huge discovery. This means that, well, stars and also planets can easily influence the production of water on their moons and can possibly even influence the production of water on each other's surfaces. Now, theoretically at least, the scientists actually expected half of the water on the surface here to disappear after those three days. But instead of reducing in value or evaporating as the scientists expected, the amount of water was continuously replenished by the Earth's magnetosphere as well and thus remained relatively similar to what it was before. Which suggests, of course, that both the solar wind and the Earth wind, the wind from Earth's magnetosphere, are more or less both responsible for all of the water we're observing on the surface of the Moon. Now, all of these observations are actually relatively new and all of this is based on the amazing Chandrayaan-1 mission by India that was already able to create a lot of really precise geologic maps and of course a lot of other interesting maps including the hydrologic map of the moon with the main goal for all of this mapping being a, uh, well essentially a research for the perfect location for a potential lunar base in the future. If we find a location that has a lot of water, a lot of possible minerals and a lot of possible deposits, and the location that possibly has a lot of research value as well, this would most likely become the point where we're going to establish the new colony on the moon. But naturally, for this type of a study, we need a lot of confirmation and a lot of additional observations. And here, one of the possible explanations could be that, well, maybe the water was actually produced by something entirely different, and neither the solar wind nor the Earth's magnetic wind are actually responsible for any of this. Maybe that's why nothing changed. But because a lot of other previous missions have already established that the solar wind does actually interact with the surface of the moon and does actually produce some types of water on the moon, we know that this is most likely not the case. It is most likely actually formed by the solar wind and the magnetic wind from planet Earth. And so in some sense, what the scientists may have just discovered is now known as the water bridge. The bridge from planet Earth to the moon that's creating all of this water on the surface. And what would be super interesting to discover here is how all of this played a role in the formation of water billions of years ago. Because we know, for example, that when the moon was just created approximately four and a half billion years ago, and for the next few billion years, it was extremely close to planet Earth. And it even had a much stronger magnetosphere, which is something we found out and which is something you can learn about in one of the videos above. And because the magnetic field and the magnetosphere seems to be responsible for basically producing all of this water on the surface, it would be interesting to find out if the moon and the earth somehow exchanged all of this water and were somehow responsible for seeding each other or possibly providing each other with a lot of different materials that only existed on one of these objects. In other words, it would be super interesting to find out if both the moon and the earth may have been responsible for exchanging a lot of different ions between one another and creating a lot of different things on each other's surfaces. And here we're talking about all sorts of magnetic particles escaping the upper atmosphere of our planet and back then escaping the surface of the moon and possibly exchanging and interchanging and then eventually depositing on the surface of each of these objects. So basically, this discovery just opened a completely new door for studying the history of the planet and our moon. But at the same time, this also will definitely help us plan the missions better, because now we know the magnetic field of planet Earth has a very different effect on the moon than what we initially thought. Something that a lot of future missions to the moon will definitely have to take into consideration. But I guess until we learn something else about our beautiful moon, or until we figure out what else the magnetic field of planet Earth does, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. All of the notes and all of the additional info are in the description below, and you can also support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt, the links to which you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.